The tensile test. First test, material with yield point phenomenon. In the first tensile test, a plain carbon steel with yield point phenomenon is to be tested. This is the test piece. It has a cylindrical test region with an original diameter of 10 mm and an original gauge length of 100 mm. Within this test region, distance marks have been drawn at regular intervals. They help to visualise and measure the plastic behaviour of the specimen. Using a hand control, the tester moves the upper cross head into its correct starting position. Now he can place the threaded ends of the test piece in the lower and upper grips of the testing machine. In the next step, he swings the extensometer into its working position and checks that everything is correctly prepared. Then he selects all necessary testing parameters on the control computer. Ready. The test starts and the extensometer's sensor arms are carefully pressed onto the test piece. This way, the gauge length can be measured throughout the whole tensile test. The gauge length is displayed at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. At the beginning, it amounts to 100 millimetres. During the tensile test, the test piece is slowly and constantly elongated with a standardised speed. The force that the test piece opposes to the imposed elongation is recorded and can be seen at the bottom left-hand corner of the computer display. The material behaviour can best be observed in a force elongation diagram. The force F is being plotted upwards on the vertical axis, the elongation delta L towards the right on the horizontal axis. At first, the force rises rapidly. Force and elongation are proportional and form a steep, straight line in the diagram. In this area, the material behaves elastically. If the test piece were to be unloaded from this area, it would spring back completely to its original length. In materials with yield point phenomenon, the end of the elastic area can be seen clearly. The plastic deformation starts abruptly and is accompanied by a sudden drop of force. If the test piece were to be unloaded now, it would not spring back to the original length, but instead show a permanent elongation. In the next stage of the tensile test, an almost constant force level with slight fluctuations occurs. This phenomenon is called the Luders effect. After a certain strain, known as the Luders strain, the force increases again. The material opposes an increasing force against the imposed elongation. Its strain hardens. Up to the point of maximum force, the test piece is strained uniformly along its length. This means that the test piece gets longer and thinner but keeps a cylindrical shape. As soon as the maximum force is reached, a neck begins to form at one point of the test piece. All further plastic deformation now only takes place at the neck and eventually the test piece fractures there. In the recorded force elongation diagram, the force FEH at the upper yield point can clearly be seen. This is the highest force the test piece can sustain elastically. FEL is defined as the force at the lower yield point, Fmax as the maximum force. Using these forces, the strength properties of materials can be calculated. The upper yield strength REH is calculated by dividing the force FEH by the original cross-sectional area S0. The lower yield strength REL is defined in a similar way. The maximum force divided by the original cross-sectional area is called tensile strength RM. In the last step, 
the tester swings the extensometer back into its resting position and removes the broken test piece. On the work table, he puts the fragments back together again. With the help of the distance marks, the percentage elongation after fracture can be determined. This is the permanent strain after fracture and amounts to about 30% in this example. Please note that the percentage elongation after fracture depends on the length to diameter ratio. By measuring the smallest diameter at the point of fracture, the percentage reduction of area can be calculated. It describes the reduction of cross-sectional area at the point of fracture in relation to the original cross-sectional area. In the second tensile test, a material without yield point phenomenon is to be tested. In this case, it is a precipitation strengthened aluminium alloy. The test piece has exactly the same shape and dimensions as the specimen in the first test. It is cylindrical, with an original diameter of 10 mm and an original gauge length of 100 mm. After fitting the test piece into the testing machine and panning the extensometer into its working position, the test can start. The initial linear curve in the force elongation diagram again shows the elastic behaviour of the material. But this time, the end of the elastic area is not revealed by a sudden drop of force or any distinct change. There is a smooth and gradual transition from linear elastic behaviour to plastic deformation. In the further course of the tensile test, the force increases and the test piece again is strained uniformly along its length. At the point of maximum force, a neck develops and all subsequent plastic deformation is confined to this neck until fracture finally occurs there. As a common substitute for the yield strength, the 0.2% proof strength is used. It is the stress that causes 0.2% of plastic deformation in the material. And this is the way to calculate it. First of all, the elongation that corresponds to 0.2% of strain has to be computed. For an initial gauge length of 100 mm, the result is 0.2 mm. In the force elongation diagram, a straight line parallel to the elastic line is drawn through the offset point of 0.2 mm of elongation. The force at the intersection point of the offset line with the force elongation diagram is designated as FP 0.2. This is the force that causes a plastic strain of 0.2%. The 0.2% proof strength RP 0.2 is equal to FP 0.2 divided by the original cross-sectional area S0. Tensile strength, percentage elongation after fracture and percentage reduction of area are calculated in the same way as in the first test.